You're listening to UnitedWeStrike.com Radio on the International Community Radio Network. Alrighty, and for those who uh, don't remember that tune, there was a little ditty called Help from the Beatles. Yeah, I'm playing a few oldies. Well, we've uh, had quite, quite the number of interesting presentations today on the United We Strike Marathon for December 14th, 2013. And I think you'll find this next presentation no less intriguing. Now, we have uh, Vinny Eastwood and Suzanne Bozell. Uh, Vinny's uh, primary website, the one that he likes to promote the most, is the Vinny Eastwood Show. It's the V I N N Y Eastwood Show.com. Uh, Suzanne's website is occupycorporatism.com. And at this time, I would like to bring on Vinny Eastwood and Suzanne Pozell. Hello. And you are live. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like being live. Hey, it's better than being dead. <laughs> yes, being alive, considering the alternative, is definitely an improvement. Yeah, uh, some might agree with you, but of course they're uh, uh, crazy and they don't appreciate life or the lives of others and they're willing to, you know, perfectly justify everybody else's extermination for the sake of their own comfort. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Not mentioning any. Not mentioning any names. No, I don't you think know. you have to mention any names. I think we can figure it out. It's very easy. They usually have an about us section on their website. Just read it. Just find out who their friends are. Yeah. Well, you are who you gravitate with, aren't you? And um, you know what? I was just thinking about this the other day, Suzanne. Is all of my friends are really awesome people, yourself included, the people that United Thank you. We Strike. A lot of the guests that I have on my show, the people at the radio network and all of this kind of stuff. You know, I've got, like, good chums all over the world. And they're all better than me at something, which is great. Because whenever I'm with them, I'm always learning something new. Right. Yeah. Have your friends one step ahead of you. So you're always educating yourself, learning a new skill. It helps with dementia. <laughs> I have a really important um, article to bring to the table. I saw this. It's uh, now four days old. And it's, uh, I, sh I wish I had written this. If I had had access to these photos, I would have written this article. But I didn't. So I'm promoting theirs because it's so good. Nobody could improve upon it. I have not seen an article this good. <laughs> um, you know, it's... Well, don't keep Are you ready for this? <laughs> Go for your life. I'm, I'm, is... I'm, I'm about to end mine if you don't continue. This is out of Policy Mike. Okay? It's mainstream. All right, folks? Say what you want. But uh, we saw all of these pictures of the selfie that Barack Obama took with the Danish Prime Minister and at the funeral and um, the the memorial of Nelson Mandela and, you know, um, Michelle Obama sitting next to him with a dirty look on her face and everybody, this, this uh, became a meme all over Facebook. I saw it everywhere. Did you see this picture? The one when Barack Obama's taking like a little publicity snapshot with somebody with a big grin on his face leaning into the camera and all of that kind of stuff at Nelson Mandela's funeral. Well, his wife sits not two seats from him going, you frickin' knobjeez. Yes, exactly. Yes. And we all gravitated toward that and we wrote about it. I didn't. But a lot of media, alternative and mainstream, grabbed onto it. Fox News said that it was an international incident and tisk tisking that could be heard across the continents. Um, this was a very, very big deal, but no one took notice of eight photographs that everyone should have been reporting on, which would have replaced this selfie distraction. And I'm bringing this up because it's that easy to be distracted. The selfie is sensational. That should be your first tip-off, that you're being distracted. So this is out of policy, Mike, like I mentioned. The first image, I wish that we could do like a presentation 
Um, I can record f- your um, your screen if you want to share screen on Skype. I can record this for the uh, the YouTube audience later. Uh, you know what? I, uh, let's do that again. Let's record this again and okay. do that. Absolutely. Number the first picture is a picture of Obama standing next to uh, former President George W. Bush on Air Force One as they flew to the memorial. They flew together. There's another picture of them all sitting there with their wives. Uh, Condoleezza Rice is in this picture. Janet, um, um, oh, God, I'm drawing a blank. Reno? No, no, uh, Valerie Jarrett. I'm sorry, Valerie Jarrett is sitting there. So Bush and his wife and Obama and his wife and, and Susan Rice and Valerie Jarrett are all sitting around having dinner and having a great time. Then there's another picture of Eric Holder. They're all at the same table. Eric Holder is now there. He's wearing a really cool uh, leather jacket with some sunglasses. And Bush is there. And now Hillary Clinton is sitting there. And, and she's showing them images on her uh, tablet. And they're all laughing and having a great time. And then there's another picture of Obama after the memorial where they were all schmoozing with um, globalist puppet uh, Bono and his wife, and they're having a good time. There's a picture of the Clintons and the Bushes sitting together as they did. They spent the whole day together at this memorial. And there's another picture at the end of all of them getting back on Air Force One and hanging out together as they ride back home. That is the real story that should have been. These are the pictures that if anyone was going to talk about pictures, they would have put these pictures out there and showed the audience, showed everyone how integral these alleged political adversaries are, where they, three families, the Clintons, the Bushes, and the Obamas, going together on a trip to South Africa, hanging out, having a good time, and going to pay homage to uh, Nelson Mandela, for whatever reason you want to talk about, these three families are hanging out like they hang out every weekend. And that is what we should be talking about, folks, not the distraction of the sensational picture with the Danish prime minister who happens to be a tall, thin blonde, and Michelle Obama sitting there pissed off because her husband's looking at a tall blonde. That's not news, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Suzanne. A yes. picture says a thousand words, but sometimes the picture they show you tells you a thousand words of nonsense just to distract you from the pictures that really matter and say the words that truly expose the truth. Yes. That, I put this article up on my Facebook page and I told everyone, please go and look at this. This is the article I would have written this. And it was so good. I, I looked at it and I said, well, I can't even improve on this. And it is mainstream. But these are... Eight pictures that we should be talking about. We should be talking about how close all of these people are. That the paradigm is a, is a theater. And that they all sit around having a good time. On your dime, by the way. They were on Air Force One. And going to, to save face and, and, and show um, some, some more acting uh, at, this, at this memorial. The selfie is the distraction, folks. That's what they knew everyone was going to gravitate toward. It's like this... Uh, this story that just came out about this little boy who kissed a little girl and then the school pressed charges against him for sexual harassment. Oh, my God. Now, that's egregious, okay, and it's shocking. But that's not what's going to help us get our constitutional republic back in the United States. That's not going to help us with the NSA violating our Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights on a daily basis. It's hey, not isn't it help interesting... Us- isn't it interesting that now they're teaching graphic sexual education to five-year-olds at the same time as they're charging five-year-olds for sexual assault for kissing another little girl? I agree with you. It's shocking. Kid, kids do that. They kiss each other and run away. That's what they do. It's not sexual. Children don't think about their bodies in a sexual way. I have a boy and a girl. And they both went through their own personal discovery phase. And it's, it's not sexual at all. It's not the way you and I think about it when we think about male and female genitalia. It's, they don't even, it doesn't even cross their mind. So this little boy kissing this little girl, yes, it's shocking. And it's shocking the charges. And, but this is not news. 
in, in the sense that we are trying to educate the public in order to return our sovereignty, both individual and national and global. That's, that's all I'm trying to say here, and especially with this article out of Policy Mike. We should be talking about these eight pictures and, and stop looking at the stupid selfie, the distraction that is keeping you from these eight pictures which show you just automatically and dramatically how integrated all of these families are. They, it's just fodder. And you, you know, you buy the, you, you're either for the blue team or the red team, you're either a, a jackass or an elephant, but you're, but you're buying into some team. It's like NFL, you know, you just, this is really what's going on. These eight pictures tell more about what's going on than anything else surrounding this whole entire thing. See, it always takes a little bit of patience. Like you say, that uh, selfie came out four days ago, but then today come out all of these ones. And uh, I think that's kind of what being a journalist, or at least being a credible journalist, is about, is not going to print before you know all the elements in the equation. Yes, it is. Yes. yes. Chicken I things never, out, perhaps? I've, uh, you know, I've learned to be a better journalist as I've been doing this for two years. You learn some things. You make mistakes. I've learned how important it is that when something happens that's like this Colorado shooting that happened the other uh, yesterday, uh, don't, I don't report on it immediately, ever, because there's so many conflicting reports. It's within the conflicting reports where the... Um, where everything is not following the official story, that's what you need to pull out and analyze. But that takes time. You have to wait until everybody's reported on it. But if they're reporting on it as soon as information comes out, that's not educational. That's sensational. And that's just meant to get you to come to their website. And that's not helping us get a constitutional republic back or maintain our sovereignty. That's just meant to get you to buy more crap. And tis the season to buy more crap. You know, thanks to FDR, we should turn um, Thanksgiving into a day uh, for the small businesses. So let's make this a national consumerist holiday. Well, thanks very much. Now it extends all the way past everything. And, and nobody's thankful and nobody's grateful for anything. Uh, we're just busy mm -hmm. spending money. Tis the season to buy people crap. Fa la 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 la. Absolutely, you're you're buying crap for, with money you don't have for people you don't like and things that they will forget about in two months anyway, or break or lose and never even tell you about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's such a negative way of thinking about it. Reality, it's a real bitch that way. Well, I was talking with, with a friend of mine, and, and my stepson likes to draw. And so my husband and I thought we would get him some really nice paper, some really nice pens, and, and uh, a wonderful book on how to draw. Because right now he's just drawing cartoons, and he's really good at it, but he could expand out so much more. And who knows? Maybe he'll become an artist. Maybe he'll do something with it. But I want to foster that. I want to encourage that talent in him to see where he can take it. So I was talking with my friend about this gift. And she's, her nose turned up. And she said, oh, that's a terrible gift for the holidays. What is that, a learning gift? No, they, they want toys. And I, yeah. I just, oh. See, see, I'm inclined to agree with you, but a little bit differently. Instead of getting him a really nice paper and pencils and everything, get him, like, pretty average ones, because that way there's room for improvement if he takes to it, and it's no great loss if he doesn't. Well, yes, absolutely. Okay, and I, also, I see that. Also, if you start off with, with too much awesome stuff, you lose appreciation for what that awesome stuff actually is, you know? Like, I think I just started out with a camera and a, and a little iMac, and now I've got... Uh, two big 27 inches in, fr in front of me that the listeners bought for me, you know, and I really appreciate them because I actually had to work for years in order to get those kind of upgrades. And um, I think parenting should be, and speaking as a non-parent, of course, <laughs> who doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Call me after Parent you guys have kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I thought about it like when you're learning – the best way to learn about the concept of earning something, right, is if people don't just give you things without you earning them. You know, presents yeah. and, and all of these other sort of things. That I think it kind of has to um, reflect the lessons that you kind of uh, want to connote. You know what I'm saying? 
Yes. Well, I do that with my children. Um, this year, I wanted to get them a little jungle gym to play outside in the backyard because uh, finally we have a house that's big enough. Um, but it's not going to happen because they're really, really expensive. And um, my family members chipped in for this. So instead, there's all of these indoor gyms that we're going to get memberships for the kids, um, uh, parks and museums and science centers. We can have a great time. We can have a great day out, like, you know, field tripping or, or seeing the sights in this, in this really nice seaside town. And the kids will be learning something about their environment. They'll be enjoying themselves. Instead of just buying them a toy that they're going to get bored of or break or fight over, you know, they'll end up... Hey, won't they be bottom. like... See? Is, isn't it going to be rather cold, though? No, these are all indoor activities. Oh, all, right, right. Yeah, I have to worry about that because it is kind of cold. It's like 37 yeah. degrees out. Because it's, it's very difficult to get the kids uh, to learn about the elements when it's too freaking cold to think. Well, I, I want my children to enjoy recreational activities that help foster growth. So everything becomes a learning activity. You know, when I, when I say that I homeschool my kids, it's not just uh, in that moment where we're sitting down doing lessons, but it's also the whole entire day, everything, everywhere we go, we, we're learning something. I thought that would be a better gift over time. We could, we could have fun with them for the next three months instead of spending all this money on one gift that they're going to, you know, break. Hey, this do. brings me to another thing. You know how, how there's a whole lot of truthers that have slave jobs and what have you, and they unfortunately have to send their kids to daycare so that they don't eat themselves out of house and home and what have you, and they don't have the time to homeschool them or whatever. I think that there's a whole bunch of truth parents out there who actually do homeschool their kids and maybe, maybe put their skulls together and come up with some form of a regimen for a truther-based daycare centre, kindergarten, elementary school, high school, you know, that kind of thing. But we don't teach the kids BS and turn them into slaves. We teach them into free-thinking, real pains in the ass. <laughs> that sounds great. That, you know, there's a lot of networks for the homeschooling. Um, it's very largely Christian-based, which I, I don't care, but it is. And th that would be great. There's a lot of moms who, who get it, and they're raising their kids with it and they don't have networking that would be fabulous contact me occupy corporatism at gmail.com that would be fantastic yeah and um maybe you could get some kind of officialdom going or what it, because i don't know about you suzanne but i would love to see an end to the deliberate dumbing down of america the deliberate dumbing down of new zealand and, and all the other freaking nations that, that are on this wonderful planet i'm really really sick to death of having to deal with really stupid people. And it's not even their fault that they're stupid. They got coerced into it. And sure. that really stinks, bro. People should be allowed to not be an idiot. They shouldn't be yes. chastised for it. Yes, my son goes and, and hangs out with other kids and... and uh he tells them what's in the hot dogs and why it's no good. And he tells them what's in the vaccines and why it's no good. And he always gets weird looks from the other kids. But, you know, he does, nobody understands what he's saying. The, the, yeah. the adults look at him like, you know, oh, my God, what is this mother telling him? But <laughs> like, catch him young, you know. You're just like raising him like this kind of Jesuit priest of the, of, the, of the truth movement, you know, totally fixated for all time to be this absolute scumbaggery exposer, won't take BS for an answer, you know. No, 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 Jesuit remember, bad. Um, no, Jesuit bad. Je Je Jesuit bad. <laughs> I'm just talking about, you know, um, what the Jesuit said about when you get up to a certain age, you know, that's kind of, um, that's kind of where your development really stems from, like the first seven years or something. And um, I was talking to uh, Ian Wishart. He was just on the uh, the George Norrie show uh, for his new book, Totalitaria. And uh, I interviewed him a while back, and um, he told me a story about the uh, the UN schooling program, how they were teaching his children um, at school how to uh, love the UN and be global citizens and all of this kind of stuff. And his um, son stands up and goes, well, the UN seems to me to just be a communist world government that wants to take away all our rights and dumb us down and make us slaves. <laughs> so that's my boy. <laughs> yeah, we had, um, 
we do this thing where we put all the change in the piggy bank for the kids and then we make the little rolls, right? So we're making the rolls. We got the pennies and the quarters and the nickels and dimes out and we're counting them and everything. And my son says, oh, look at all this money. And my, my three-year-old says, it's not money. It's fiat. That's my girl. <laughs> Yeah, and, and this is the great thing. I um, I just want to be a parent so badly. Um, about kids is that you can really, really influence them. You can actually imprint them. So if you if you're paying attention, you can actually make your child infinitely more intelligent and more skilled than you were at that age because you know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Unfortunately, there's a, there's a lot of um. Uh, parents out there who are unthinking, right? You know, they, they feed their children crap, they sit them in front of the TV, they barely interact with them at all, they don't teach them anything, they don't uh, give them relationships or anything, they give them a cell phone when they're four years old, they give them the vaccines, they give them the, the, uh, the sweet juices and fruit and, 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 uh, and Coca-Cola and all of this kind of stuff from a baby bottle. The, the parenting situation worldwide is real bad. And the answer is not eugenics, the answer is educating people. Yes, you're not supposed to give a baby Coca-Cola from a sippy cup. Oh my god, I, ah, that you're drives me nuts. You're not supposed to give a six-month-old Prozac for being depressed. You're not but you know? Or a tantrum. I mean, just, just these basic principles, you know? We could, we could avoid an entirely fracked up generation. It, it take. It takes actual, like you said, it takes interaction and you have to actually parent and, and it, you have to go back a couple of generations because our parents didn't do a good job either. My, my mom was busy going to school and working full time. She didn't have time to parent me. So I got to go back a couple of generations to see what real parenting should be. And it's interaction with your children. When your kids go to the indoctrination station when they get home, um, you should be sitting down to dinner together at a table, not at the TV, but you take out their books and ask them what they learned today and correct everything that's wrong. At least yeah. do that. Hey, no, no, no. In, in correcting everything that's wrong, you're actually giving them what's known as a quote unquote real education. Well, I don't yes, know. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue that one because, you know, I, 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 my kid came home and was telling me the history of the American Civil War, and, and you know, I, 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 I kind of scratched my head a little bit and I said wait a minute no 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 the civil war was about states rights the rights of the states to remove themselves from the union if they so desired and my son was convinced oh no 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 it's all about slavery but he did go in the next day to his uh, um, I think it was uh, junior level history class and and spouted off the chapter and verse that no 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 this was uh, all about states rights and uh, he wound up getting walked down to the principal that day. So sometimes I'm not so sure that, uh, you know, making your kid into a truther is a good idea, particularly if they're going to have any interaction with the, uh, uh, with the system at large. Well, how, would you, how would you argue that one? Well, I think that through fire, you can find out just how fireproof you really are. And Suzanne's just had to uh, leave us right now. She's got a uh, little emergency there, Scarecrow. Um, so you can hang up on it. And oh. what I find interesting is that if there are these people, these uh, children, um, that speak out in a classroom full of people who are at the moment being indoctrinated, you never know what kind of an effect that will have not only on that child's life he gets made an example of, but to the other children around him who sees this kind of persecution happening to somebody who is just expressing a fact that is can and actually is documented, right? Um, I think you need to suffer trauma in order to wake up sometimes. In fact, uh, in general, I don't know anybody who has done a hell of a lot in their life in terms of exposing scumbaggery and uh, creating something good for the world that hasn't had the world shaft them. You know? Well, it's, it's, the part, it's the part of that empathy within people that you know what it feels like to be dumbed down and lied to, you know what it feels like to be enslaved, and now you devote your life not only to freeing yourself, but about freeing others, and not just in your body, but also in your mind and your heart. Yeah, you know, I, I felt it was, uh, you know, my job, you know, being dad, you know, I, I had this, you know, responsibility to kind of give my kids 
the benefit. Maybe you should have given them a proviso that said. Maybe you should have given them a proviso that said, "By the way, son, this is the truth as documented. But if you tell people about it, they'll think you're crazy, and you might get in trouble because people are that crazy that they think that the truth." Is dangerous. Well, when I, when I actually met his history instructor, I, I realized immediately what the problem is. Now, you have to understand, Vinny, that uh, you know I, I live in the state of Virginia. Now, the state of Virginia is a little south of what we in the United States refer to as the Mason-Dixon line. So, you know, we was on the losing side of, of that particular uh, discussion. Uh, but the uh, the history instructor that my son was dealing with was from New Jersey, I think. You know, so he 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 uh, he totally misunderstood the realities of the Great War of Northern Aggression. Well, this is what they do. It's like you know when you take a photograph and you photocopy it, and then you photocopy that photocopy, and so on and down and down forth. What they're doing is they're passing off second hand cropped information from a picture of history and getting somebody to copy it and repeat it over and over again to a bunch of people who will in turn copy and repeat that, like Chinese whispers, and eventually the message get lost and nobody knows anything at all. Well, I tell you, Vinny, we are coming up to the last moment or so of our uh, of our visit together. I, I do want uh, Suzanne had to bail out of here a little bit early. She apparently had a, a minor emergency on her end that she had to go tend to. Uh, but I do want to mention her website, uh, Suzanne Pozell at uh, occupycorporatism dot com. And Vinny, I will give you the last moment to make your blatant self promotions known. Well, um, I was hoping we could play that um, that song that I, well, I was going to. I was going to lead out with it. I mean, if you tell me it's Excellent. clean and it's not going to offend anybody, it's very clean. It's very clean and I, very I'm, cool. I'm going to use that uh, as the bumper for our next segment. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and um, I'm Vinnie Eastwood from the com, broadcasting live from the Summary Island Chain Nation of New Zealand in Auckland, where it's so hot that you bathe in the sunshine as much as you do your own sweat. And my website is the com. Vinnie with a Y, because it's the most important question, and Eastwood as in go ahead, make my news. And uh, the song we're going to play for you is In the Summer, In the City, uh, by the Parky Harchies, which is uh, my band, and uh, I'm about to go off and uh, practice after we listen to this one. So thank you very much, United We Strike Radio. You're doing the good work that many should be doing, but as always, it rests with a few dedicated good people that keep the wheels turning. Vinny Eastwood, thank you so much for your presentation and your participation in the United We Strike uh, Marathon. Thanks again. This is United We Strike Radio on the International Community Radio Network. Don't buy, don't comply, ask why. UnitedWeStrike.com radio.